that there's a sign-in place there and a chance for comments. If you have any needs in the church or if you'd like to offer special prayers, you can scroll right down there. side of your page, the right-hand side of that web page, you'll see a chance to sign up for one of our newsletters. You can sign up for the All Church Wailings, or if you'd like to know about musical events, go ahead and do that so that we can keep in touch. We'd like to. We'd like to be in touch. A couple of things to share with you before we begin our worship. First, I hope you find a way that you can be prayerful in your place. This is still worship together, and we want you to feel as though you're in a sacred space. So whether it's on your couch, wearing your comfy slippers with a cup of coffee, or whether it's on your porch, wherever is good for you, I hope that you're finding a way to tend the holy in your own heart as we gather. Uh, we also hope that you're taking good care and good precautions. As you know, the governor has asked us all to keep away from crowds, and I hope especially for our older and more vulnerable viewers that you're doing that, that's the best way to flatten the curve. We're going to slow the transmission. So please be smart, please be safe, wash your hands a lot. Uh, if you'd like, you can use this little tip. If you sing the doxology three or four times while you're washing, that'll be all that you need. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Just keep singing to be good and keep washing. Praise God all creatures. Wash that long and that'll keep us all safer and sound. I wanted to also uh, ask you some, uh, share some good news with you. Last week, I mentioned that we were starting the Berea Kit feeding program, that uh, helping out with that. We'll start the feeding here tomorrow. And I asked for volunteers on our website. Do you know that within minutes, we had all of the first two weeks volunteers completely filled? So thanks to those of you who have agreed to serve already. Four weeks, we wanted to do this. We wanted to get the first two weeks set then we're going to tweak it, and we'll let you know when we need more volunteers. But thank you, thank you, and thanks to Laura Nagel, who is our coordinator for that. We're very, very grateful. I have a second need, however, and that is we need some technicians. We need video technicians. We need people who'd like to learn the sound system, because obviously it takes a little bit more to do a service like this than when we're just on a Sunday morning. So if you are an out-of-work video producer, we need you. If you are an out-of-work would would be video producer we could use you if you'd like to learn about sound or running cameras we need you if you will put in the comment line or send me an email that would be great uh, now i hope you know that the service bulletin is also available to click if you just click right to the right of the video picture you'll see a beautiful picture of a dulcimer that's our worship bulletin for today and you can follow along During today's service, I also hope that you'll uh, take a time to remember those in your own life who need prayer. We know that many are frightened, many are fearful, but when we come together, our fear is shelved and our anxiety is halved. So I hope that by being together now with us, you're feeling that already. It's certainly doing me a good bit of good to be with all of you and with those instrumentalists and musicians who are here with us in the room. I invite you to be at peace. I invite you to find that peace inside you as we think today about what might we do and how could we be wrapped in a cloak of light. Let us fall silent. Let us take just a moment to breathe deeply and let God's Spirit guide us and grace us as we begin our worship together.
On the day when the weight deadens on your shoulders and you stumble, may the clay dance to balance you. And when your eyes freeze behind the gray window and the ghost of loss gets into you, may a flock of colors, indigo, red, green and azure blue come to awaken in you a meadow of delight. When the canvas sprays in the current of thought and a stain of ocean blackens beneath you, May there come across the waters a path of yellow moonlight to bring you safely home. May the nourishment of the earth be yours. May the clarity of light be yours. May the fluency of the ocean be yours. May the protection of the ancestors be yours. And so, may a slow wind work these words of love around you, an invisible cloak to mind your life. We gather to remind ourselves that we are in infinite care. And we gather to make sure that we are tending the holy in our lives. This blessing that comes to us is meant for all. And so, now, we leave behind us all things that keep us that keep us far from the grace and the light. Gather us in, Lord. Gather us in. And together we may be your people. And together we may find the way to holy ground in all that we do. As we confess, as we come together, as we remain apart, we know that not everything we do has been perfect this week. But that's not the end of the story. There is a chance to return to grace, to find ourselves reset by this time. So before God and with the people of God, I confess to my brokenness, to the ways that I wound my life, the ways of others, and the life of the world. May God forgive you, Christ renew you, and the Spirit enable you to grow in love. Amen. Before God, with the people of God, we confess to our brokenness, to the ways we wound our lives, the lives of others, and the life of the world. May God forgive you, Christ renew you, and the Spirit enable you to grow in love. Amen. Amen. In your, your mercy, mercy, help, help us, us tend this holy ground. ground. My friends, peace be with you. Peace be with you, deep peace of the running wave to you. Let us center ourselves as music guides us forward.
Each week during Lent, we've been singing the ancient psalms. We've been singing them because, of course, the psalms were the, the songbook, the hymnal of the ancient, ancient Hebrews. So today, I invite you to join me in this psalm, a familiar one, Psalm 23. And you'll see that the words are now appearing on your screen. The response sounds like this, and you can either hum it or sing it to yourself. And we have those here in the room who will help sing it with us. Hear it first as Bernardo plays it. We'll sing it at the beginning and at the end. Let's sing it now. God restores my soul and leads me in right paths. God is my shepherd, I shall not want. God makes me to lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. God restores my soul and leads me in right path for the sake of God's name. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You mount my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of God my whole life long. God restores my soul and leads me in right paths. Amen. Well, we sang that psalm because I wanted to focus on that as our scripture with our children. So if you have young people in your house or if you are just feeling young at heart, come join me down here at the beautiful Zen table at our sand table. We'll talk a little bit about this wonderful and ancient hymn of comfort.
Hello, everybody. I'm so glad to see you. I hope that you are having a good time with all of your uh, schoolwork and things at home. Well, I have put together a couple of things here on the table that have to do with shepherds because the psalm that we just sang, Psalm 23, says, the Lord is my shepherd. Now, uh, it doesn't mean the Lord is my shepherd that I don't want. It means the Lord is my shepherd, semicolon, I shall not need anything. Uh, so I have a few things here. Does anybody know what this is? Well, this here is a shepherd's crook. It's, uh, it's what shepherds use to sort of help guide the sheep when they need to get them across waters or need to get them through things. And if there's a one that's gone astray, you can hook them and pull them back in, keep them close. Uh, I also here on the table have tried to create in a little bit of sand some parts of that psalm as well. What do you see there? We've got a valley sort of between mountains and that psalm that talks about God leading us beside the still waters. I've put the waters from last week right over here on the side. I wanted to uh, remind us of the justice candle, which I, I uh, will light in a minute here. But the justice candle today, I want to light for something that's very important that has to do with living waters. Living Waters is, a, is one of the things that we support in the church as a wonderful resource and an outreach of a lot of good people to make sure that everybody in the world has clean water. Today is Clean Water Sunday. I don't know if you knew that. And we're lighting the justice candle for all the people at Living Waters. We're lighting the people, especially for a woman named Rubinia Sanchez, who is a director from Guatemala. She's one of the people working in her community who is making it possible for people to be safe and drink clean, beautiful clear stream water. We support that with our gifts, we support that with our energy, and we support that when we help each other stay clean and stay safe here too. So I hope you're doing that. Well, I wanted to also tell you today, you may notice that I am wearing something special. You can tell I'm wearing my pretzels. Because the other thing that it says in this scripture is that the Lord sets a table before us. And you can see here on the table that I've set a pretzel. I have a giant pretzel. We are halfway through Lent, people, and that means it is Pretzel Sunday at Union Church. And if you were here, I would feed you pretzels because pretzels are an old, old tradition. Did you know that? Oh yeah, you may have thought that maybe pretzels looked like hearts, but do you know that instead, when they were first invented, pretzels were meant to go this way? Why was that? Well, I'm so glad you asked. Pretzels were meant to go this way because in Northern Europe, when people prayed in the Middle Ages, they didn't pray like this. They prayed like this. And the pretzel was bread that was specially baked during Lent as a time to remind people that they were being held and embraced by God. Just like this psalm. Just like those words. Just like even though you're going through a hard time, Surely God is with you, a rod and a staff to comfort you, to embrace you, to lead you to good, still waters. So today, when you pray, and this is, goes for young and for old, you might just remind yourself of this ancient sign of God's love. Pray like this. As you're praying, you can imagine God holding and wrapping every word of yours in a beautiful cloak, in a loving arms of love and grace. You are led beside still waters. Each of you matter to me, and each one of you matter to God. So I'm so glad that you're with us. And I'm glad that wherever you are, that you're staying safe, and that you're helping others be safe too. And even though it's hard, you got strength. You got this. You can do this. And I'm counting on you. So thank you. Let's, uh, let's have a word of prayer this way. Everybody who wants to, you can join me here, and you can join me at home. But just, just enable yourself to feel that love. Have you got it? Good. Let's pray. For all of our kids everywhere, Lord, we give you thanks and we offer prayers. And we ask you to help us help others have all the living waters of the world that they need. Lead us and guide us, Lord, because sometimes we feel like we're in the shadows. And when we're having a bad day and a sad day and a hard day, wrap us in your love. Hold us tight. Help us see what's ahead. Help us see the beautiful table you set before us. Holy One, help us stay in that frame of mind all our lives and give it to all those we love too. We're praying for the homeless people. We're praying for all of our pets, Lord. 
We're praying for those we know are sick, and we're praying for our friends we can't see. So bless us, and bless these all who gather in your name. In Christ's name we pray, and everybody said, Amen. pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Sleeper, awake. Rise from the dead and Christ will shine in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. What I said to the kids, maybe I say to all of us, don't you sometimes need a little extra reminder that you're being guided? This has been one heck of a week. And it's one heck of a week after the last week, which was kind of a heck of a week. I think we're in for a wild ride, my friends. And that's why it's good that we're together, and it's good that we take time to give ourselves the strength that we need. So I hope that wherever you are, you're doing that for your family, for your friends, for, for, uh, for your setting. Right? It's important. It's important that we look together and work together. This wonderful passage from Ephesians is a reminder that, yes, human beings live in both light and in dark. We are in a mixture of, of mud and sometimes madness. Just go to Walmart and you'll see what I mean. This week, if you went to the stores, you saw people buying what they needed and the store shelves, maybe for the first time in my life, you know, I saw entire shelves that were empty. But I also saw people who were buying food for their neighbors who couldn't get out or who were worried. And I also saw that there were store clerks who were working frantically to restock those shelves and keep the supply moving. So we're both. We are always both. We have a little bit of the crazy in us, and we have a lot of the grace. When Paul writes to the, the Ephesians in this letter, he's writing to a community of sort of expatriates, uh, new, new Christians, uh, former, former Hebrew uh, folks who are still worshiping in that way. He's writing together to them and telling them, look, you know, you have to be the examples. You have this opportunity, at least, to be the examples. And not because you are suddenly somehow free from all of the trials or worries of the world, but quite the opposite. You're an example because on you, light has shined in the darkness. You know how it matters to love your neighbor. You, you have been loved, and having been loved, you become light. The light of God shines on us, and then the light of God shines through us, and the light of God is magnified because we open ourselves to sharing with others. The poet John O'Donohue that, that Don read for us this morning as our call to worship speaks of that invisible, that invisible shroud, that beautiful cloak that comes upon us as a blessing. The cloak of blessing probably in my life right now is this cloak of light that has nothing to do with whether the sun is shining or not. The invisible cloak of light is the light that comes to me when I see 
the kids. We had a Zoom call today. If you're watching, we had a Zoom call with all of the children of the church. And if you want to know how to get in on that, put a text in that little box. Let me know on the comment lines and we'll get you added. But I got to see their faces, and I got to see that they're working their school, and they're doing their job, and they're taking care of their pets and their friends and their family. And I hope you're doing the same, because that's light. That's the light Paul is talking about. Is it possible to slide? Is it possible to let our fears and anxieties take over? I'm sure it is, and I'm sure it's happened to some of us here. I know that there have been dark nights I have less hair, and the hair I have is turning gray. That's true. It's not that we are unaware of all the difficulties. It's rather that we're also aware and holding both as that cloak of blessing around us and around our little corner of the world. Paul says that we have to sort of wake up, and certainly all of the events of this world have certainly forced us to wake up. We have had to wake up from the ways in which not caring for our neighbors has endangered ourselves. We have had to wake up to the ways in which all of the years and years and years we put money and time and energy into personal and private greed, none of that has helped us or is helping us now. The good news is that we have in the examples of both our scriptures and in all the saints who have ever walked in this building and in every other church and in many other mosques and in tons and tons of temples and synagogues, all of the righteous of God's people, of every faith, know that to love your neighbor as yourself is the salvation and light of which God speaks. You don't have to be a member of this church. You don't have to be a member of any church. You don't have to be religious. And if you're watching this, welcome. I'm glad you're here. Here's what I mean when I talk about being religious and holy and tending the holy. It is to tend the common compassion that every creature on this planet needs and deserves. It is the light of blessing that we can offer one another in decency in care and in consideration. It is, in fact, the way we put that into the world in our our families, the same as when we put it into the world as our government and as our community organizations. The care of others, the compassionate concern. This is the light. This is the cloak of blessing. This is the running wave of peace that runs underneath us. And whether you have been schooled in Sunday schools all your life or whether this is the first time you have ever tuned in to watch a service, what I hope you hear is this, that you are included in that blessing. That no matter where you have been before now, no matter what you have thought before now, all of us are in this together. Our well-being is tied to each other's heart. We'll find a way. We are waking up to the ways that we can be a blessing to others in ways we never thought possible. Those in this room, those who have worked hard this week on the media team, those who are making the cameras run and the sounds come, those of you who have put together meetings in neighborhoods and helped look after the kids who can't eat at school, those of you who are thinking about, how am I going to help my neighbor who needs groceries and can't carry them and can't go out? All of that, all of that. That may be the holiest work we undertake this week. We are likely to be in this together for a while. So you can't let the crazy get too bad. You have got to find ways to breathe deep, to find that which tends the grace and the strength within you. This is not a sprint. This is not a snowstorm. We'll not be back to school next week or the week after. We won't have Easter services in the same way we used to, and we may be a long, long time before we see each other in person again. But my friends, even though it is Lent, we are an Easter people. We are surrounded by that cloak of blessing. Whenever two people meet, my rabbi friends say it's a mitzvah, it's a blessing. 
whenever it is that we come together and the people of God can celebrate again together, it will be a mitzvah. It will be that blessing. But until then, we will be blessings in new ways. We will be wrapping each other in cloaks of light. We will be offering each other the hands of help in the ways we can. There are many things that will have to change. And as I said, we're all waking up to just where it, how we're going to be able to respond. But we are a people with 2,000 plus years of knowing what it is to care for one another. We have an ancient and holy tradition of holding one another in the light for the light in order that we might be the light. So this week, make sure for your own health that you are doing something to be the light for someone else. A phone call, check in, and receive the blessings around you. Be aware, take in the sun, take a good long walk and see God's greening earth. Breathe deeply of songs and music and connections with one another. We're looking for ways to do that. And you are all welcome to join. Uh, we'll have another coffee with the pastor if you'd like to join in. We can't have an actual coffee hour, but look for us, an email from me later this week. And on Wednesday morning, we'll have another coffee together by Zoom. And we'll help anybody who needs it. Now, that's another thing. If you're watching and you're not sure you know about all this video conferencing in Zoom and it feels a little intimidating, we've got people ready to wrap a cloak of electronic blessing around you. We have friends and family and members of the church who would be happy to talk you through it on the phone or if it feels safe to come at an appropriate distance and show you either here at the church or at home, we'll call you and make it easy for you. We're using Zoom and a whole other bunch of conference calls. and We can make it happen even if the only thing you have at home is a telephone. Just type into that box at the bottom of the screen if you're able just let us know that you'd like a little technical help and we'll do it because it matters that you're connected. It matters that we're the church in these new ways. So my friends, this blessing for you. May you be light. May you be in light. May in loving arms embrace you. Instead of being tied up in knots, may you be wrapped up like a pretzel. May you be held in that cloak of light now and always. Amen. In order to help us wrap in that cloak of light, I'm going to ask Don to step to the peace bell to lead us into a time of prayer. And for you, too, also a time of offering. All of these things are things that we do together, and no less so just because we're apart. Our offering today is going to make sure that the church is able to continue to providing love and services even to people as they grow ill or perhaps have needs because of quarantining and viruses. Your gift couldn't be more needed. And in addition, we're also helping support many of the local agencies that are doing it, that are doing good work in this, in this community. We're also, as you know, looking to keep our, each other in our prayers. And if you'd like to type in prayers in that box, that's a good way to do it as we pray. But center yourself. Allow yourself to, to participate in the blessing. You can click on the screen for the easy tie. That's a simple form that'll take you for a donation. Or you can mail it into the church. You can make a phone call to someone and just say, hey, I've been thinking about you and praying for you. But for you right now, maybe let's fall silent together in the presence of God. Let's... Let ourselves be ever more aware of it. We'll let, uh, we'll let music come to us and begin our time together. We'll let Don ring the peace bell for us as we enter into this time of prayer and contemplation.
rest easy on the floor. Settle back in your chair. Breathe deeply and peacefully in this moment. Let this be just some of that holy ground you tend. Hardly ever are we in either full sun or complete darkness. So as you breathe, just remember that humans were always navigating some of that light and some of that shadow. In your prayers, think how we might be more light. How might you avoid darkening yourself or others? Stop with me now and imagine where the light is. Just see it in your life. Pray for all you need to go there and do that. Breathe slowly and steadily to find the light. Breathe slowly and steadily until it begins to feel possible. Wrap the blessings of music around you as you pray. Wrap the music and blessings of nature around you. Feel yourself maybe in that pretzel position, that pretzel prayer being held right now. God is blowing like a cool wind flowing through all of these challenges. Open yourself with every breath to take strength, to take blessing, to carry hope. Breathe deep this ancient love. Connect deeply, strongly. Let your prayers enter that wind of blessing. With me around the world, we remember the peoples of the Czech Republic, Poland and Slovakia, and here in town, our friends at the First Church of the Nazarene. We pray for all of these people and all of these places. We hope that God's wind will blow to them. They are our sisters and our brothers. We pray also for all those who are in crisis. And we pray for all those who are in celebration. I lift this day, the birthday of Jennifer Melton and my own mother this day, with joy and thanksgiving and for joy and thanksgiving for all of you, celebrating in new and maybe sometimes strange ways. May God grace you and bless you. We remember those who are in trial and those who are suffering because of natural disasters beyond this. Let us work together. Let us, with our time and our talent and our treasure, offer what we may that all may have clean air and clean water. Though we walk in the shadows, your light shines. Though we fear death, you set a table before us. Though we are buffeted and shaken, a cloak of light you wrap around our every trouble. Here in this moment, shepherd us through our fears and lead us beside the still waters of a peace 
not dependent on the affairs of the world. With your healing hand, restore us who are ill and heal those who are broken. We pray to be in the light amidst present darkness, to be light made so by your grace. When we are tempted to despair, help us walk as children illuminated and incandescent with your love. Following your Christ, serving your people, make us better than we feel and lighter despite our heavy burdens. For in you, with you, and because of you, we will walk and fear no evil. Our cup overflows with blessings still, O Holy One, O guardian of our blessings. This we pray in the way Jesus taught as we reached to you as our maker, our, our mother, and our and father our who art in heaven. heaven. Hallowed, Hallowed be thy your name. name. Thy kingdom come. come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forevermore. Amen. And so it begins, this next week, this next week of hope, of challenge, of blessing. And so, as you enter your day, may you enter it as children of the light. May you walk in the light now and always. May you go into the garden in the light. And as you go, take humor and flexibility with you. Take the blessings of charm and quirkiness and wonder with you. Go, not as people who have forgotten, but as people who remember. And then, together, let us sing of God's grace and goodness. We are so lucky to have the Ritchie family here with us. The cousins have gathered to sing their aunt's song, and we are grateful for all the music that they bring. Let's be in the cool of the day. My Lord, you said unto me, Do you like my garden so green? You may live in this garden If you keep the grasses green And I'll return in the cool of the day Now is the cool of the day now is the cool of the day. Oh, this earth is a garden, the garden of my Lord. And he walks in his garden in the
And my Lord, he said unto me, Do you like my pastures of green? You may live in this garden if you will feed my lambs, and I'll return in the cool of the day. Now is the Turn in the cool. 